welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. It's most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm Sam Albanese from the National Weather Service. And today's weather around the state, we do have uh, three low pressure systems that have been uh, impacting the weather around the state. And uh, so to get started, we'll just start taking a look at the satellite imagery and see what's going on. The first one is we have this low pressure system that's been off southeast Alaska and the southeast Gulf of Alaska keeping cloudy showery conditions throughout much of the panhandle and then an inverted trough right on up into the south central region right on up through the western interior and that resulted in snow in the uh, northern Cook Inlet region right on up into the western interior. Running the loop one more time, um, we do have our low pressure system down here off the eastern and central Aleutian Islands funneling moisture on up into the eastern Aleutian Islands and then we also have low pressure up in that Bering Strait region and that's it's been responsible for snow right on up to the northwest Arctic coast as well as blowing snow conditions. Taking a look at the uh, surface map to kind of further uh, explain what's going on there. See with this low pressure system here in the northern Bering Strait near the Seward Peninsula, bit of a tight pressure gradient right on along that northwest Arctic coast creating some uh, windy conditions, 20 to 30 knot type winds with the snow resulting in blowing snow and there were some uh, wind and weather advisories out earlier in the, in the, in the day those have since expired. Same thing for the St. Lawrence Island area as the winds are, have let up a bit. Along the cold front with this system, bringing some snow showers in along that uh, Bering Sea coast from Nunavak Island north, and then generally clear conditions over southwestern Alaska, taking a look back down towards the eastern and central Aleutian Islands. Warmer conditions with this low pressure system resulted in, for the most part, rain or rain showers until you get further out into the western Aleutian Islands where there was a mixture of rain and snow showers. Down at the southeast Alaska, you could see here showery activity <coughs> was prevalent throughout much of southeast Alaska, except for the northern panhandle. Some rain showers even along that north Gulf Coast. Those were mixed with rain and snow as you got on up into the Prince William Sound area to just snow in that Thompson Path area. And some scattered snow showers in the Copper River Basin. Snow over northern Cook Inlet into the uh, western portions of the Susitna Valley, and that's actually kind of moving back towards the eastern portions of the valley and then snow showers up through the western interior. Taking a look at the forecast for tonight, that low pressure system in the Gulf of Alaska is basically weakening weak low pressure along the north Gulf Coast to southeast Alaska. Expect the showers to continue in the southern panhandle, a uh, mixture of rain and snow showers as you move further north and then rain and snow mixed in Prince William Sound with snow in the northern portions of the sound, especially in that Valdez area or snow showers. Scattered snow showers over the southeast interior. Some snow can be expected from that upper Yukon Valley right on down to the central interior, as well as snow persisting across the Seward Peninsula, that Kotzebue Sound area, and expect areas of blowing snow to also persist, reducing your visibilities there. Some blowing snow as well over the Barrow area. And then as you move further east along the Arctic coast, expect areas of flurries and fog there. Out into the Bering Sea, the more active low pressure system is there. Rain and snow mixed over the eastern Aleutian Islands. The rain should be spreading overnight into the western Alaska Peninsula region, particularly that Cold Bay region. Uh, rain and snow mixed uh, is going to be occurring over the Pribilof Islands with a mixture of rain and snow along the Aleutian Islands as well. Taking a look now at the forecast for Thursday. Things generally are cleaning up in the Gulf of Alaska. Some broken cloud conditions, scattered shower activity in southeast Alaska, some rain and snow showers possible in Prince William Sound with some isolated shower, uh, snow showers in the Copper River Basin. 
Now where we have our main low pressure area in the Aleutian Islands with the next system that's starting to show up well south of the uh, Alaska Peninsula. Expect rain and snow across the Alaska Peninsula spreading to the east throughout the day. Rain and snow over the eastern Aleutian Islands as well. Rain and snow over the central Aleutian Islands. Further north, colder air is going to be pushing back down towards the Pribilof Islands. Expect that to be just snow there. And then out into the western Aleutian Islands, some snow showers can be expected as well as some strong north, north, uh, northwesterly winds. Up across much of the interior portion of the state, chance of snow in the eastern interior as well as portions of the western interior. Snow is likely up along that eastern uh, Brooks Range. Cloudy conditions along much of the Arctic coast. May, see, may still see some blowing snow conditions over the western Arctic coast. Expect generally clear conditions over the Kenai Peninsula, south central Alaska, right on out into the lower Kuskokwim Valley as well as the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta regions. Taking a look now at the forecast for Friday, big low pressure system is moving into the picture. Strong pressure gradients around this system. This is going to, uh, as it moves up, produce some strong winds, especially across Kodiak Island, moving into the North Gulf Coast, the outer coastal areas of Southeast Alaska. As the day progresses and the, the gradient continues to tighten, you're even going to see stronger winds in the Northern Panhandle. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the Marine forecast. But for, for Friday, expect conditions in Southeast Alaska. Initially, not a lot of cloud cover. As the, the system pushes further to the North and East, you'll see your clouds moving in late in the day Friday. Some uh, cloudy conditions over Kodiak Island, showers or rain on the south end of the island. That'll be spreading north overnight, uh, late night Friday. Rain and snow mixed on the Alaska Peninsula with rain almost exclusively on the south side of the peninsula as warm air is entrained in the system moving up along that region. Some rain and snow showers are possible in the Pribloff Islands. Along the uh, Bering Sea coast, the, the uh, Yukon Delta, you may still see some areas of blowing snow in those strong east-northeast winds there. Same thing for the uh, St. Lawrence Island region, probably going to see some areas of blowing snow there. Chance of snow over the eastern Arctic coast down into the eastern uh, Brooks Range region. And then along the trailing trough with this low pressure system across the Aleutian Islands and western, into the western Bering Sea. Rain or, rain or snow mixed or rain and snow showers mixed along the length of the Aleutian Islands is what you can anticipate for Friday. Taking a look now at temperatures around the state today. Southeast Alaska, very warm conditions in the 40s throughout Southeast Alaska. Once we move further north along the North Gulf Coast, then we start to see temperatures down into the uh, right around the freezing mark. Same thing over the South Central region, the Cook Inlet region. Teens as we move on up into the Eastern Interior and the Copper River Basin, as well as the Tanana Valley into the single digits there. And then as we move further north, very cold conditions in the uh, upper Yukon Valley, and especially in that circle area, 26 below. Temperatures along the, the Arctic coast, all below zero, 10 below over the northwest Arctic coast. And then a little bit warmer as we get down towards the Kotzebue Sound area and Seward Peninsula, as things are a bit more mixed up with that low pressure system there and windy. Southwestern Alaska, temperatures in the 20s in the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, right on down to the Bristol Bay area, teens further inland towards Iliamna. Temperatures in the 30s across the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutian Islands, as well as the Pribloff Islands, as well as temperatures in the mid 30s throughout the Aleutian Islands themselves. For our low temperatures for tonight, expect continuation of the very cold temperatures in that northeast interior, 30 below in that circle area, 12 below for Yukon. Cold conditions in the eastern interior as well, single digits above and below zero there, right on down into the Copper River Basin. Teens and 20s in the south central region, 20s and 30s along the north Gulf Coast, 30s to low 40s in southeast Alaska. Temperatures over southwestern Alaska expect into the teens in the Bristol Bay area to the uh, Bering Sea coastal regions, uh, the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, although Nunavak Island should only drop down to about 20. Single digits over St. Lawrence Island, single digits in the Kotzebue Sound area to the teens, same thing for Norton Sound. Across the Aleutian Islands and the Alaska Peninsula in the 30s can, are the temperatures you should expect tonight near freezing in the Pribloff Islands. By tomorrow, southeast Alaska staying on the warm side, though not as warm as today. Some temperatures are going to only make it into the mid-30s in the northern panhandle, low 40s in the southern panhandle. 30s in the Prince William Sound area, 20s over south central Alaska. Temperatures in the uh, eastern interior, again, much like they were today. So more than likely that circle uh, region, even though it says zero on the map, don't be surprised if there's going to be some locations that are much colder than that. 
staying below zero along the Arctic coast until you get towards Cape Lisburn. Temperatures in the teens to around 10 over the Seward Peninsula, teens and 20s over southwestern Alaska to the 30s over the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutian Islands as well as the Pribilof Islands for tomorrow. Taking a look at our flying weather for tomorrow, some marginal conditions in southeast Alaska in those showers, marginal conditions in Prince William Sound as well in the showers, some marginal conditions along the south side of the Alaska Peninsula and then the western Alaska Peninsula as well as the eastern Aleutian Islands into the Pribilof Islands throughout the length of the Aleutian Islands themselves. Up along the Arctic coast, marginal to IFR conditions over that northwest Arctic coast in the uh, snow or blowing snow, and then IFR conditions basically because of the foggy conditions along the Arctic coast north of the Brooks Range. Taking a look at our passes for tomorrow, VFR conditions for Anaktuvik as well as Adigan Pass. Moving on down to the Alaska Range, expect VFR conditions for Lake Clark as well as Merrill Pass. VFR conditions for Rainy Pass tomorrow. VFR conditions as well for Windy Pass. As we move on over towards Isabel Pass, marginal conditions, likely because there's still going to be some lingering showers, VFR to marginal conditions generally throughout the day tomorrow. Um, for Mentasta Pass, same thing. With the snow showers in the mountains and things aren't going to be quite clearing up yet, marginal to VFR conditions can be expected through Mentasta. Tanita Pass, generally VFR conditions, although early on you may still see some marginal conditions and potentially foggy conditions in the early morning hours there, actually right on into the uh, early afternoon most likely. Down to Portage Pass, expect marginal conditions due to the showery activity uh, and the cloud cover that we're anticipating in the sound. And then down in southeast Alaska for Chilkoot and White Pass, you may start off with marginal conditions early in the day, but expect VFR conditions for the majority of the day through both those passes. Taking a look now at our freezing levels. Freezing levels in southeast Alaska right around 2,000 feet at the surface as you get along the uh, border there. Surface freezing levels right along the North Gulf Coast through uh, Bristol Bay on up to the St. Matthew Island area. 2,000 foot freezing levels in the uh, eastern Aleutian Islands and western Alaska Peninsula. And then the freezing levels drop back down to the surface right on out over the western Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at our icing for tomorrow. The areas of concern are going to be wrapped around that low pressure system that's out there. Um, occasional uh, moderate to widespread uh, icing freezing level to about 12,000 feet over the uh, Alaska Peninsula and across portions of the eastern Bering Sea to the central Aleutian Islands. And then light isolated moderate um, uh, icing around that across the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutian Islands and then out further to the west as well as into the Pribilof Islands. Taking a look at our jet stream for tomorrow. Jet stream starting off at about 155 knots south of the Aleutian Islands, tapering off to 140 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula. Comes on up with a very weak jet into the Gulf of Alaska at 60 knots and then moves on, dives back down towards the uh, Oregon coast at about 100 knots. So a pretty vigorous jet out, out over the uh, Pacific, but it dives off quite a bit as it comes over towards the uh, Oregon coast there. Down to the 9,000 foot level, Generally pretty light winds in southeast Alaska, very light winds over much of the mainland until we get up towards the uh, Arctic coast, uh, about 25 knots just off the coast, 10 knots across the Brooks Range. Around our low pressure system and across the uh, Alaska Peninsula, pretty vigorous winds at about 30 to 40 knots there, also about 25 to 35 knots over the central Bering Sea uh, around this low pressure system. And then some strong winds around the backside of that low pressure system, about 30 to 45 knots there. Winds not nearly as strong up into the uh, Bering Strait region, 30 knots over the St. Matthew Island region, but lighter winds in that Bering Strait area. Taking a look at the uh, 3,000 foot level winds, very strong winds across the Alaska Peninsula, about 45 to 50 knots there. 35 knots across southern Kodiak Island, as well as along the Bering Sea coast near Nunavak Island. And then 50 knot winds continuing across the Bering Sea, dropping off to about 35 knots over the western Aleutian Islands. In the Gulf of Alaska, generally speaking, pretty light winds over the eastern Gulf, stronger winds in the western Gulf. Light winds over the mainland, up towards the uh, Brooks Range, about 10 to 15 knot winds there, as well as along the Arctic coast. And that takes us to our turbulence for tomorrow. The only real concerns with turbulence are going to be out across the Alaska Peninsula. Occasional to widespread moderate turbulence, basically below 3,500 feet, with that strong cross barrier f f flow across the, uh, the mountainous terrain there. 
you may even see some areas of isolated um, severe turbulence across the Alaska Peninsula. Out into the western Aleutian Islands to near ADAC, also expect some moderate turbulence and that northerly flow coming around the backside of that low pressure system in those areas. Generally speaking, over the remainder of the state, because of the light winds, not expecting a lot of turbulence uh, throughout south central Alaska as well as much of the mainland. That wraps up this portion of the show. Enjoy the segment and come back to the marine forecast. Well, cornices are the bomb of the backcountry. A real effective tool for testing the stability of the snow. If you can get a, maybe a refrigerator-sized block of snow rolling down the slope, you know, that's, that's a pretty good test of the slope. If nothing happens with that big block of snow rolling down the, down the hill, it makes you feel a little more comfortable about skiing that slope. And uh, I tend to avoid the real big, gnarly ones. I uh, work with the fresh, small cornices, maybe the size of a refrigerator at the most, and uh, kind of work back from a, from a point of, real, of safety, maybe near some trees, kind of working out towards the edge. I try to get a good look at it, see how overhung it is, and uh, work in from the side of it. If I've got a rope, tie into that rope, and definitely want to avoid the big overhanging ones and work with the smaller, fresh cornices. You can also take a piece of parachute cord or a uh, small diameter purlon and tie some uh, small knots in it and uh, use that to saw the cornices off with. Uh, maybe a 20 or 30 foot piece will uh, do a pretty good job on a cornice maybe the size of a, a Subaru or uh, one of the modern uh, Cadillacs. There are a number of other quick and easy ways to test for instabilities in the near surface snow. By stepping above a ski track, you can test how easy it is to kick a small slab onto the ski trail below. Or you can jump on the triangle of snow at the apex of each switchback. Finally, you can saw out a small block with your glove, then pull on it. All of these simple tests take only a few extra seconds, and by making a habit of continuously performing them throughout the day, they yield valuable information about how well the surface slab is bonded to the underlying snow. For deeper, weak layers, however, you will need to dig down with your shovel and do more formalized snow pit tests. We can think of a snow pit as a miniature avalanche path where, under controlled and safe conditions, we perform various tests to see how well the slab is bonded to the underlying snow. First, after digging the snow pit, simply feel the various layers of snow. The weak layers easily erode away while the strong layers stand out in relief. Then, make the snow pit wall smooth and vertical. One simple test is the shovel shear test. First, make vertical cuts in the snow pit wall the same width as your shovel. A snow saw saves time, but you can also cut with the tail of a ski. Next, cut behind the block only as deep as the shovel will penetrate. Insert the shovel and pull. Don't lever on the shovel, but simply pull straight out. Pay attention only to the straight, smooth breaks which come out easily. You can look at the bottom of the block to see what kind of weak layer was involved. Shielding with your hand makes the crystals easier to see. Then, cut behind the block again and pull with the shovel until you get to the bottom of the snow pit. Although the shovel shear test is a good test for finding and identifying weak layers, there are much more reliable tests for determining the stability of the snowpack. The best single stability evaluation slope test for a backcountry skier with being the Rooch blocks. Uh, we used to do a lot of shovel tests in my own personal ski touring. We're finding now I do some shovel tests on the flats, but more and more the Rooch block is the test of choice for the slopes. In a Rooch block test, after digging a smooth snow pit wall about as wide as your skis, use the tail of a ski to cut the sides and the back. If the snow is too hard, you may have to use a shovel. The block should be isolated on all four sides and be about a ski length wide and about the length of a ski pole up the slope. Then you simply put on your skis or snowboard and step gently onto the block. Finally, you jump on the block progressively harder until it fails. Now we've been studying uh, the Rooch block fairly intensively in British Columbia for the past two years now, and what we found is very much in agreement with the uh, Swiss experience. If a block releases, 
when you're isolating the block, when you're approaching the block, stepping into place, or the first push, then the slope is dangerous and should not be skied. If it takes either of the jumps into the air to release the block, then there's still a possibility of the slope releasing, and uh, the slope should be uh, either not skied, or you should pull out all your safety tricks, uh, use your best uh, route selection to uh, perhaps ski a less steep slope nearby, uh, but uh, it really requires full precautions. The slope is suspect if it goes on either of the first two jumps. If, uh, if it doesn't go at all, or if it only goes with a, uh, an unclean break, not a nice clean failure, or if it, you have to jump repeatedly to get it to go, then uh, there seems to be a low risk of the uh, skiers triggering avalanches on that slope. But even that is conditional. The, it depends on that you've chosen a good site, and that that's consistent with the other things that you're seeing, what you're hearing from your entire stability evaluation, everything from the numbers you get over the telephone numbers, your phone, the information you get from the telephone before you go skiing, what you see happening on the slopes around you, what you learn from poking your pole in the snow and from talking it over with friends. You need a consistent picture of snow stability before you commit yourself to skiing a, a slope. Since snow can vary markedly from place to place, where you dig a snow pit is just as important as how you dig one. The idea is to dig a snow pit in a spot representative of the slope you intend to cross. Yet the trick is doing it without putting yourself in danger. Often you can find a small representative test slope where the consequences of a slide are small. It should face the same direction and be just as steep as the slope you're interested in. You should avoid ridge lines or areas where wind has affected the snowpack. As always, when in doubt about the safety of a slope, use a belay rope. Welcome back for the marine portion of the forecast, uh, broadcast, and we'll get started by talking about the uh, sea ice edge. And basically, with that strong storm that's coming up into the uh, south of the Gulf of Alaska Friday, bringing colder air down, we're expecting the, you can see where the ice edge is uh, towards the uh, St. Lawrence Island area along the uh, Cusquam Delta coast, and that's going to continue to expand to the south as that cold air starts to funnel down, and we have predominantly north northeasterly flow over the next several days. Taking a look at the marine forecast for Thursday in southeast Alaska, southern uh, inside waters as well as the southern outside waters, southeast winds 20 knots. Moving further north in the inside waters up to Lin, uh, the Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay area. 15 knot winds in the central panhandle, north winds 25 knots in that Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area. Along the outer coast of waters, south-southeast winds about 20 to 25 knots throughout the entirety of the outer coastal region. Taking a look at the area for Friday, north winds increasing. This will be late in the day Friday, more like Friday night, 40 knots Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, 30 knots southern, uh, the uh, central inside waters. Southeast to east winds 35 knots in those uh, southern inside waters. Southeast winds about 30 knots in the southern outside waters to 25 knots as you move further north towards the uh, just off of the east Gulf Coast by uh, Yakutat Bay. Taking a look at the forecast for Thursday over the south central region. Generally light winds in Prince William Sound and northern Cook Inlet. Northeast winds 10 knots. East winds 15 to 20 knots along the north Gulf Coast increasing to 25 knots out of the northeast down Cook Inlet as well as in the Barren Islands area and northeast winds about 30 to 35 knots over the Kodiak Island waters. Taking a look at the forecast for Friday, northeast winds 35 to 40 knots in the Kodiak Island waters, 30 knots in the Barren Island out of the north northeast, northeast to east winds 25 to 30 knots along the north Gulf Co Coast outside of Prince William Sound, 15 knot northeasterlies in Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, north winds 15 knots in the northern inlet to 25 knots as you move south of Calgan Island. For the Alaska Peninsula on Thursday, east winds about 35 to 40 knots are what you can expect across the Alaska Peninsula and northeast winds 30 knots in the Bristol Bay area. Friday, expect the, the whole region to have generally northeasterly flow, 40 to 45 knots south of the peninsula, 30 knots Bristol Bay and the north side of the peninsula. Taking a look at the Aleutian Islands for Thursday. In the eastern Aleutian Islands, pretty strong winds, east winds 40 knots over the uh, eastern Aleutian Islands. Northeast winds 20 to 25 knots as you move further to the west. Light and variable winds on the south side of the uh, central Aleutian Islands near Adak, but northeasterly winds about 25 knots on the north side. Further out to the west as we get more around that tight gradient with that low pressure system, north winds 40 knots over that Amchitka area to 35 knots as you move on over towards Shemya. 
Taking a look at the area for Friday. Expect northeast winds about 30 to 35 knots over the eastern Aleutian Islands, 25 to 35 knots further to the west, 20 to 25 knots over the Adak and Atka area with 30 knot northerly winds towards Amchitka and 30 knot northerly winds out towards Shemya. Taking a look at our Bering Sea Colts in the waters for Thursday. 35 knot winds out of the east across the Pribloff Islands, north northeast winds 30 knots in the Nunavak Island waters, northeast winds 25 knots in the St. Lawrence Island area to 35 knots as you move on towards St. Matthew Island. On Friday, expect northeast winds throughout the entire region, 30 knots from St. Lawrence Island down to the Nunavak Island waters, as well as the Pribloff Islands, with northeast winds 35 knots in the St. Matthew Island region. For the Arctic coastal waters, expect your winds out of the east 20 knots from the eastern Arctic coast right on over towards Barrow, 30 knots over the northwest Arctic coastal region, 20 knots towards Cape Lisburn, and then right around the low pressure system and that trough extending into the uh, outside of Cotsview Sound, winds more westerly there at 20 knots. For Friday, expect the winds to be light and variable over the eastern Arctic coast, northeast winds 15 to 20 knots over the Barrow area to the northwest Arctic coast, 20 knot northeasterly winds just off of Cape Lisburn, and again, those west winds wrapping around into Cotsbury Sound, although the inner portions of the sound should be more of a northeasterly type flow pattern. For a quick recap tonight, expect generally showery conditions in southeast Alaska with a mixture of rain and snow along the North Gulf Coast, some snow showers over the uh, eastern interior, snow over the upper Yukon Valley down into the central interior, snow across the Seward Peninsula into the Kotzebue Sound area with blowing snow along the northwest Arctic coast, and then around our low pressure system near Dutch Harbor, rain and snow mixed wrapping around that system. And that's about all the time we have for the show this evening. Thank you for watching and have a good evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan.